Okay, so good day class. So I'm architect uh, Vigor. So I'll be your instructor for building te technology two. Technology two class will have wood and mass on reconstruction. Um, so we'll only limit ourselves a one story uh, residential building uh, for your uh, laboratory or coursework. Okay. But before that, I'm going just to introduce you on what are they paid for construction okay. so that you'll understand the details that you'll be doing uh, later on in this course. Okay, so for the pre uh, for the preparation for construction first is staking out the building taking out so it's the process of relocating the point of boundaries the site where the building is to be constructed okay, so normally class um, the geodetic engineer or surveyor will go to the site and relocate, uh, relocate the boundaries so that's the time when you can see uh, the surveyors and geodetic engineers looking into the different points of the property. Okay, so the point of that is that uh, you must not build beyond the property line. Okay, so when you build a structured building, it should be only within the property of your client. Okay, so you cannot build outside it. So that's the purpose of staking out. So these are the uh, steps. So the first is you measure the required setback from the corner mode. Drive two stakes and stretch a string between them to represent uh, the front uh, building line. Okay. Next is to measure the required side setback from one of the side lot lines. So along the building line. So drive the first corner of the building from stake. A, measure the width of the building and mark with stake B to obtain the other front corner. Number three, estimate right angles from stakes A and B and measure the length of the building in those two points. Drive to contemporary stakes C and D which will mark the rear corners of the building. C and D should be equal to A and B. So draw lines along the diagonals. AD and BC and ensure that these lines are equal then transfer the building lines to the butter boards so for further definitions sticks are wooden sticks used as posts sharpened at one end driven into the ground to serve as boundaries or support of the butter boards then strings are either plastic cords or galvanized wires strung across butter boards and used to indicate the outline of the building wall and foundation. Okay, so when you design a building class or any structure, it usually has setbacks. So those setbacks they're determined by the building, uh, the national building code. Okay, so you have different setbacks for different types of buildings. Different setbacks are required by law for residential buildings as well as when you go to commercial and industrial okay so laying out the butter boards so these are the butter boards here okay as you can see this is your stick this is your plumb bulb here it's the soap curve outline this is the stick and it's the outside line of the foundation mold Okay, so butter boards are horizontal boards. They establish the height of the footing trenches and foundations. So it establishes height of finish for levels. And leveling done with a line level or carpenter's level. Its height of butter boards may be level with or a little higher than the top of the finished foundation. So it's really important class that you establish the finish floor levels um, the ground floor level when you are laying this out so that you can see how high your building will be so 
this is a spirit level this is a spirit level so it is an instrument or tool key vertical and horizontal line check in a plumb bob is a weight attached to a string used for vertical line check water a method of leveling horizontally butter boards with transit then three four five multiples this of steel tape measure so it's a manual method of squaring the corners of building lines and staking so what are the difference so between formwork and shoring so formwork it is used to shape and support fresh concrete until cured and able to support itself okay. normally in the philippines class formwork they use plywood okay. but when you use plywood the some of the problems are that maybe it would bulge at the corner because when you pour concrete that concrete has weight so if it's not tightened properly so there's a tendency that it won't be straight so in actual practice class what we use are so in actual practice what we use are phenolic boards because it is much, uh, I think it's much, much stronger and the result is much smoother after you pour the concrete. Then showing, it's our temporary supports designed to carry forms for beams and slabs. Okay. In the Philippines, um, the most common shoring material are coco lumber, but if the problem with coco lumber is that in the business of construction is that you can only use it around one or two times. After that, uh, it's useless. So, it's really a waste of material. So, what we do in the actual practice class is that here, we use uh, BI pipes because it's much stronger and then you can do a lot of projects also. Okay, so these are the forms for concrete construction, the materials, uh, construction are the, the lumber forms, should only be partially seasoned. Okay, so if you're in the business of construction, I don't think this is a good option. Okay, so that's just my opinion because it would be, it would, I think it's a waste of material. Okay. Also use plywood forms. Use where a smooth surface is proof, grade A, at least one half inch uh, thick. Okay. But plywood also it has a very short life when you use it as a form. Okay. What I recommend is use the steel forms and the phenolic boards. Okay. So it's much uh, economical. That you can you use it for several projects. So let's go to the construction tools and equipment. Okay, so it's, we're still here. So for example, are your forms? Forms class meaning that it will take the shape of. Okay. So this is a uh, knee brace here. Uh, this is a T and L heads. This is for wood shoring or the metal shoring looks like this. Okay, so you have adjustable metal shorts and bracing. You have the string or a jack. You have metal or wood joist. Here you have the seals. Crown. Okay, so I think uh, if you have seen your neighbors construct their houses, you're from this one. So is there wood uh, formwork? So reusable forms may have a square or rectangular cross section. So you call it the yokes. So take note of this class because some of this might um, come up in the board exam. Then these are the basic which you really need uh, someday if you're going to practice your profession. So yokes are clamping devices for keeping column forms and tops of wall forms from spreading under the fluid pressure of the earlier newly placed concrete, they exert pressure. Okay. 
especially in its fluid form. So if if it is not properly fastened last, there's a tendency for it to uh, bulge. So you don't want um, your columns to look uh, not uh, straight in a straight manner. Okay. So it should be sharp as possible. But construction is not really perfect. What's important is that you avoid major mistakes. Because it's a big problem class if your columns start to tilt. Okay. So these are a wall form. So this is what you call the spreaders here. So usually of wood, space and keep the wall or forms part. Here your form ties. These are plywood sheeting here. So your horizontal railers here. So your wood studs. This is your bracing and this is your seal plate. So what are folks? Here you have your snap ties. So you have notches or crimps that allow their ends to be snapped to the concrete surface after stripping off the forms. So a small truncated wood, steel or plastic attached to form ties to space and spread wall forms. So you leave a neatly finished depression in the concrete surface to be filled or left exposed. And these are your she bolts. So it consists of water rods that are inserted through the form and threaded onto the ends of an inner rod. So after stripping, the water rods, uh, wheelie rods, are removed for reuse while the inner rods remain in the concrete. Okay, so these are the steel forms and uh, shoring. So shoring, so shoring is also used to support scaffolding work so scaffolds are temporary uh, platforms designed to support workers and materials on the surface of a structure and to provide access to work areas above the ground so an elevated platform is called a scaffold okay. so your scaffold class is really important uh, primarily one is so that it it could provide uh, mobility for your workers on the side okay. then your scaffold should also be well made because you don't want accidents also to happen in your site okay, or your project so the major components of metal show horizontal brace the brace the diagonal the component B of the adjustable the fixed type and the standard of the vertical component and accessories are this so these are some of the shoring components uh, for the ledgers, the fixed braces, and the adjustable braces. Okay. So these are some of the base and, til uh, base and tilt base, the adjustable jacks, the rapid short heads. Okay. So I'm sure right now, class, that you're confused because uh, it's your first time to encounter this uh, subject on uh, building technology uh, but when you graduate or on, on, or even now try to look at uh, videos on construction then someday when you if you, when you graduate this course you should have balanced experience not only in designing but also exposure on the site as well So I won't go into detail the shoring assembly instructions, okay. but I leave the material at our uh, group page. Okay. Now let's look at the construction tools and equipment. So hand tools are the tools that use power delivered by man only. Okay. So example, I think a uh, good example that we are your saw, then you have your power tools. Power supplied by forces other than coming from humans. So power tools, class, mm, in my experience, is easier for you. Okay. Especially if you're in the construction business because you could do things faster if you know how to operate them. Okay. 
Then equipment is a term that refers to large, complex tools and machines that is designed to do a particular job. Then heavy equipment <clears throat> is equipment which is very large and very powerful. Hand tools. So a pry bar. So a pry bar, this one here, is used to force open boards used in forming concrete. Okay. So after the concrete has hardened already, um, you can you'll use this to open the forms. <clears throat> then you have a folding rule. So these are measurement and layout tools. So a folding rule, this one, is a and tape measure are the most common tools for measuring boards, pipe, wire, etc. Then you have what you call here a digital rule. So used to measure relatively long distances such as those in highway construction. Then I think this is one of the most common you can see here in the Philippines is the framing square. It's a layout tool that is used to measure 90 degree angles at the corners of framework and joints. So they can also be employed to determine cutting angles on dimension. Then you have what you call a level. So a level is a long straight tool that contains one or more vials of liquid and used to determine if the horizontal or vertical then you have a chalk line or marking lines this one so there are also different types of hammers so i think this is the most common here it's a claw hammer it's an ordinary hammer used to drive or remove nails okay so and see here, this is one for driving the nails, this one for removing uh, them. This is sledgehammer, this one. So a sledgehammer is a heavy hammer used to drive sticks into the ground and to break up concrete and stone. And you also have different types of screwdrivers. Screwdriver, which has a flat tip and is designed to fit a standard. Then what you have here is a Phillips screwdriver, which is an X shape tip and is used to turn Phillips head screws only. Then you have the spiral like ratchet screwdriver, that which relies on a pushing force rather than a twisting force. Then you have also the different types of hand saws. Okay, so first is the rip saw, which has a teeth uh, designed for ripping or cutting with a grain of wood. You have the cross cut, which is used to cut across the grain of wood. Then you have a box saw, which is a special type of hand saw that has a very thin blade and just those on trims and moldings. Then you have a hack used to cut metals. Okay. Then you also have different types of chisels. So first one here is a wood chisel, which is used to trim wood and clear away excess material from wood joints. Then you have a cold chisel, which is used to trim metals. So, certain types of specialized hand tools. First is the nail set, which is used to drive finishing nails below the surface of a wooden frame or molding. And here we have a pipe wrench, which is used to turn around objects like pipes. Then you have a brick trowel here. This is a brick trowel, which is used to place and trim mortar than bricks or concrete blocks. You have here a bull float, which is used to smoothen out the surface of wet concrete. And of course, uh, one of my favorite materials on the side is the blind riveter, just to fasten pieces of sheet metal together. Okay, so then let, let's look into the different uh, types of power tools. Okay, so I'll just post this class on our uh, group page so that you can review and study them. Okay. I hope that you can also see them in actual and actually learn how to operate uh, these power tools okay. because i think we really lack here in the philippines because our construction it's the construction methodologies here it are it's already behind um compared to more advanced countries and yet uh, there's only a few people who use power tools Power tools, it's not uh, already a new type of technology. 
in construction. It, it has existed, existed already for a few decades already. Uh, but you, you don't usually see them in, uh, in, especially in residential construction here in the Philippines. There's quite a few contractors who use its full power and potential. Usually you can see manual uh, labor, especially in the provinces or the rural areas. Then there's also different types of hammers. Uh, the pneumatic hammer, the rotary hammer, the nailers or nail guns, powder equated stud drivers and staplers. Okay. Then you also have the different equipments. For example, if you have a conveyor, which is an equipment materials other than fluids. And so the transit this is a type of surveying equipment. I think it would be discussed in, uh, better when you, when you already have your surveying subjects. So transit is to measure horizontal and vertical angles to obtain land elevation. And you have a surveyor's level, that which is used to determine an unidentified elevation from a known one. Then you have your construction laser, which flashes a narrow accurate beam of light to make a baseline for additional measurements and is used as a level or as an alignment tool. Okay. So, let's go here. I think you're familiar with this kind of truck class. So, it's a concrete mixer. Okay. Uh, but in a uh, smaller construction, uh, in, uh, for example, in residential buildings, what you can see are the smaller versions of this one, um, usually drawn by a uh, motor, rotating uh, motor, or the most common is the manual mixing of concrete. So there are type of welding machines. The first, you have the arc welding machine materials by melting portions of the metal. So the arc welding machine is what it looks like. And you have a laser-powered welder. This is used to weld material by employing a laser to heat the metal. Then you have your heavy equipments. This in uh, bigger constructions. Because when you do two, uh, three to four stories or more uh, structures or buildings, so a bulldozer is a tractor with a pushing blade which moves earth and clears land. And of course, you have your crane here. Sure. Machines that lift large shells, the type, uh, these are your types of crane, your crawler crane here. It's a crane mounted on metal threads so that it can move over rough terrain. Then you have a truck crane. It's mounted on a truck frame so that it can This is a hydraulic truck crane. This is a mechanical uh, crawler crane. You have a tower crane or a climbing crane, which is in construction of tall buildings. Then, these are your different types of excavators. This is what a backhoe looks like. Looks like. So a backhoe is used for general digging, which is usually mounted on either a crawler or a truck frame. You have a trencher. A trencher is a kind with a special kind of machinery which digs trenches or long narrow ditches for pipelines and cables. You have here your front end loader. So it's a large shoveling machine that can scoop or deposit a large amount of material. Your different highway construction equipment. The first is a scraper. So it is a machine that loads, holds, and dumps soil over medium to long distances. Then you have here a grader, which is an earth working machine that grades or levels the ground. And see, you have your compactor or roller, which is a machine that compacts for road paving. You have your D, the paver, which is a machine that faces, uh, spreads and finishes concrete paving material. Okay, so, let's uh, stop with that. Okay. So, at least uh, you've seen some 
uh, of basic uh, when you are preparing for construction since it's a service class. Okay. So next week class, uh, I think we should I uh, will will begin our lecture uh, for the things that you should know when you are doing the plans already for your structure or building such as the connections with type of connections and concrete connections okay so i'll be posting our activity at our group page and in new step also so if you have any further questions or clarifications you can contact me anytime class you can send an email okay so you can send a message in facebook I try to respond as long as i'm online okay so i think that's it for this week um i think what i forgot is to introduce myself properly so i should have done that in the first a few minutes of the lecture so i'm architect adolf vincent Picor. so i my Uh, I have already around, I'm not so sure, but 12 to 13 years, uh, 14, 15 years experience as an architect. Okay. So I spent a lot of time uh, working overseas okay, here to the Philippines. So I finished my uh, postgrad studies at the University of Liverpool in the United Kingdom and Currently, I am studying my doctor of technology education in this, in, in this university. Okay, so, so, I think that's it. Okay, so, stay safe, class. And, um, I hope that uh, you're all doing uh, fine.